Good morning and you are very welcome to my first Monday messages for quite a while. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Rebecca and I'm a holistic health coach and homeopath. And I use my skills to help as many people as I can to become as well as they possibly can, um, physically, emotionally, spiritually, uh, all three preferably, so that um, you can all lead your lives as fully as you'd like to and on your own terms. And my Monday messages are part of my commitment to that. So I just pop in uh, usually every week at 10 o'clock. Um, to share a thought, um, a, a journaling um, subject, a focus for the week or an idea to, to help you to become more conscious of what works for you and what doesn't work for you um, in order for you to be as healthy as you possibly can. So um, today, yeah, I, I mean, I've been absent for most of this month. Some of you might know that. Um, because I was ill, um, extremely ill, actually, um, for the first time in decades. And uh, as usual, it's once I was through the worst of it, I learned a lot. And one of the things that really struck me about being this ill is the importance of um, convalescence. And I've, I've already sent a newsletter out a, a, about that subject. And it's a bit of a dirty word these days that, um, or even a word that, that people don't really hear very much. Um, but what I'm talking about is once you're through the, the worst of the symptoms of whatever illness um, you're experiencing, the the dedication afterwards to time to rebuild and restore and recuperate is often missed out. And the consequences of that can be um, quite long lasting, actually. Um, I've lost track, actually, over the years as to how many people I have seen with various chronic illnesses that can be traced back to never really fully recovering from acute illnesses. And maybe for those of you who aren't familiar with the difference between acute illness and um, uh, chronic illness, when I'm talking about acute illnesses, I'm talking about the illnesses that come up suddenly that have a kind of uh, life cycle, if you like, of their own, and that are actually intended to either, sorry to say it, but either kill you, or they enable you to do a kind of house clearing, a kind of clear up and um, getting rid of anything that shouldn't be there or that is potentially damaging. And I don't really like using the kind of battle analogy, but I think it's it's useful in this instance to remember that when we've been through that kind of illness with, you know, lots of fevers and delirium and discharges and all sorts of um, lovely things like that. If we think of it as a kind of internal battle that's taken place. Um, and we think about those old fashioned battles, you know, on a field with soldiers, um, as opposed to the modern warfare that we experience nowadays, um, although the same is true. Afterwards, whoever's won the battle, um, the, the soldiers that have taken part are either either dead or they're hot injured they're um sick you know they need repairing they need restoring to full health so that they can fight another battle but equally the battleground the land that the battle has been fought on is destroyed as well that needs rebuilding so that's what's happened inside you when or us when we do some kind of illness and what happens these days all too often i think is that we are under some kind of pressure from ourselves, largely, but from society as well, 
to as soon as you feel even vaguely better, get back in the saddle, push through it. Don't listen to to your body. Um, just, you know, it's important that you get back to normal and that you you um, start. Uh, you don't let it beat you, if you like. And oh now I can see there's a couple of people join me. Um, I can't quite see who you are. So you might send me a little message and tell me who you are. You're very welcome. Um, yeah, just talking about acute illnesses um, and that that period of recuperation can make a really big difference as to whether you actually fully recover from the illness or whether you just have a sense that you're never You've never really been well since that that illness. And as I say, I've, I've encountered lots and lots of clients who have developed some kind of chronic illness because they've never really recovered from either an acute illness, an accident, a trauma of some sort. They haven't allowed themselves the space to put extra tools in to rest, to eat good food, put nourishing um, food in and, and supplements if they're applicable, um, just to, to, to rebuild that tool shed so that we can actually fully repair ourselves before we start rushing back to normal life. So with that in mind, I wanted you, because these are extraordinary times and many of us um, are under all sorts of extra pressures, um, having to do all kinds of extra things that we wouldn't normally be doing, even though we might be housebound, largely. Um, that doesn't always mean that we have less things to do. It can quite often mean we've got lots more, especially if we've got kids around. Um so I wanted to encourage you this week to really start listening to your body, your physical body, because actually our physical bodies do not lie. They give us clean information about how we're doing. And our oh, Ashling, good morning. Ashling saying, great to see you back. Love the conversation around recovering back to wellness. Such a valid point. Yes, I'm glad you feel that, Ashling. Um, I do feel it's overlooked, um, you know, that period of recovery. It's almost like, a, a, you know, something shameful that we would be vulnerable enough or weak enough to need rebuilding um, and recovery. Um, but it is vital. Um, and there are all sorts of tools that you can use to to do that. Um, you know, in my case, I would, of course, my primary uh, tool would be homeopathy. And I have found it invaluable throughout this illness. And I'm still under the care of my lovely homeopath. And I will be for another few weeks, I feel, while I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I would say, 85 percent back to normal. Um, I'm very happy to say. Um, but also I'm really watching what I'm eating. You know, I'm I'm focusing on good, clean food, organic fruit and vegetables and um, juicing still. Um, I do take supplements. I use essential oils and I am very dedicated to my Qigong exercises, which have helped me enormously throughout this, um, especially with the breathing. Um, and Valeria, good morning, and you're very welcome. And she's saying, I absolutely do agree with you. Good, good, good. Um, yeah. And, you know, in the old days, you know, when people were ill, if they could afford it, they would be sent off to sanatoriums. We'd be sent to take the air, um, wrapped in blankets, taking in the mountain air. Um, or perhaps we would go and stay with relations that lived in the country if we were in cities, things like that. Um, but it was recognised that you needed a time to just go back to basics and breathe in fresh air, have nourishing food, rest, um, you know, nap. You know, if you feel tired uh, during the day, don't push through it. Don't ignore it. Just take it as, OK, this is my body telling me that I need to rest, that I am pushing myself a little bit too hard. 
And if you allow yourself that, then you will fully recover. You will not be running on empty. And it's running on empty that contributes to things like overwhelm, feeling overwhelmed, um, you know, things are getting too much, um, that your body starts not really working quite as it should. And that how that happens will depend on your individual vulnerabilities. Um, I mean, I have a couple of little physical signs that I now know give me an indication that all is not 100 percent and that I need to start minding myself a bit more than I would normally. Maybe you're already um, in touch with those little little signs that you have and it will be individual to all of you. And if you if you want to share one of those, you never know, it might help somebody else. But that's what I want to encourage, really. It's for you to this week maybe start being consciously aware of what your physical body tells you and also responding to it, actually doing something about it rather than going, yeah, I'm a bit tired, but I've got to put that wash on or I've got to do that washing up or, you know, my child needs her history lesson or whatever. It, the world is not going to stop because you need to sit down for 10 minutes or you need to just, you know, lie down on the sofa for an hour. Um, I know it's hard with young kids, um, but there's always some way of just slowing down the pace instead of thinking that we're in this constant race to get things done and get through things and that if we don't, that we're not valuable. Um, it will pay dividends if we start to listen to not our minds, because our minds play all sorts of tricks on us, but our bodies don't lie, mostly, you know. So listen to your energy. Um, look for the basic building blocks of how you're functioning. So things like your gut, um, how you're eliminating rubbish, so how your bowels are working, whether you get very windy or you get indigestion or heartburn or your appetite changes. You know, perhaps you're um, craving a lot of stimulants, a lot of sugar or alcohol or coffee or tea. If you find you're needing those things to get you through the day, then you're ignoring what your body is telling you. Um, so I want to encourage you to just stop and, and think about all those things and start really connecting with how your physical body behaves, what messages it gives you and what you can do to actually honour that and to conserve your energy um, or perhaps put extra tools in at this time. Oh, just give yourself a break. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if you're not running to a particular schedule. Um, I know it's helpful sometimes to have some kind of structure, otherwise we'd all just, you know, wander around in pyjamas feeling gormless. Um, but there's a balance to be had. And it is tiring to be um, doing lots of extra things that we wouldn't normally do. So just maybe take the foot off the pedal a bit. Listen to the body respond accordingly and maybe think about getting some extra tools going in. You know, what can you do to build up that energy before it becomes something long term? So I hope that's been helpful. Thank you so much for all your messages of um, good health and, and uh, yeah, support. I really ap appreciate it. It was it was hard. It was a tough couple of weeks actually um took me by surprise but i've learned a lot from it so it's good to be back thank you very much for joining me and if you are joining me on the replay then you're equally welcome and do pop in the comments below any thoughts you have about listening to your body or if you do have some little thing that you when you think about it you think yeah actually when i'm when i'm starting to go downhill I get a bit irritable or if I start to go downhill I develop a tick in my eye that's something that can happen with me I get, I get a little twitch in my eye 
or perhaps your bowels don't don't work terribly well or you get a headache whatever it is see it for what it is and that is your body going uh hello you need to listen to me okay have a lovely week and as ever if you do want more details of how to work with me then use the link in the post with this video and i yeah i'm wishing you all the very best for the coming week take care bye